So why is artificial intelligence so convincing? Because it is. Uh, you read a poem or a paper written by AI, and it's so convincing that there's so much meaning behind it that we start assuming that AI must be super intelligent. In this video, I'm going to actually come from a completely different angle. I'm going to suggest that modern humans are so easily fooled by words, that is to say we assume that they have meaning, that we're just very easily fooled into believing that AI has meaning behind it. If we look at humans, we've been around maybe 200, 300,000 years, and at some point we started to use language, but we did it in a way that was useful. So maybe you would point and call that a lake. That's something that can be experienced. It's pointing to something in the real world, which is to say, something that can be experienced. And other animals do this. Monkeys have a sound when some dangerous animal is approaching. But modern humans were so easily fooled by words, uh, which is to say that there's a sound, but it doesn't point to anything that is experienceable. It doesn't point to anything that can be directly experienced in terms of consciousness. And therefore, it's an abstraction that we're fooled into believing it exists in the real world. And if we look at, again, I've done videos on depression and anxiety, and it's a very bold thing to say that these are made up words because they're plagues of modern society. But what if the plague, what if the suffering is not due to this thing out there called depression or anxiety, but due to our belief being fooled by these words into believing that they do, in fact, exist when they are just ghosts. And uh, again, let's take a sentence like, I want to be happy. Uh, you can go through each word in that sentence. I cannot be experienced. Want, that cannot be experienced. And again, it feels like they can be experienced. Oh, I know what it means to want something. But these are shadows. They're ghosts. If you have a sip of your tea in the morning, that's a direct conscious experience. This idea of wanting something is just a thought. It gives the illusion of having substance. So I want to be ha even happy. Uh, it feels like, oh, I know what happiness is. I, I would know it if it hit me or if it was suddenly upon me. Happiness is another made-up word that we're fooled by. And you can in no way experience it in the same way that you can experience uh, walking into the, the ocean or... Um, the sun on your face in the morning. And if you consider last night, I actually missed the uh, vice president's rule debate, uh, but it doesn't matter <laughs> because in reality, yeah, there were two human beings making sounds. And perhaps some of those sounds actually reflected reality, but much of it didn't. So we have words like the economy. And these are abstractions now that no longer refer to anything in the real world. Uh, they did at once refer to the exchanges that people may have made between each other in terms of goods or services. Now it's this complex thing that we buy into. It's like uh, William James called this vicious abstractionism. Uh, he caught it at the very first part of uh, the early 1900s and didn't see how much it would explode. With vicious abstractionism, we believe that an abstract concept exists in the real world. But of course it doesn't, and neither did any of the other concepts that went on during the debate. People, uh, all the political positions, uh, Democrat, Republican, and then this idea, you know, waking up this morning and, oh, well, someone won the debate. And of course people could win. You know, if my son and I went out and had a race, he would definitely win. And But that's a physical event, and we can attach words to them that might be useful. But when he would be, uh, you know, far, far ahead of me, every other human in the world would agree, like, who won? Because it's an observable event. This is why we call it come to your senses. Or we call it common sense, because when it comes to our senses, when it comes to direct conscious experiences, we all agree. The disagreement only comes when we enter this uh, abstract world. Then suddenly things become subjective, and it feels like there's a point of view, but we're all bamboozled and buying into this world in the first place. So let's get back to AI. So why are we so easily fooled by, by artificial intelligence? I mean, I've read uh, several students' papers and it seems so impressive, and then I start wondering, well, Maybe AI wrote this paper. And I've done another uh, video where I think 
questioning if AI is conscious is the wrong way to go about it. Things are not conscious. Consciousness creates the idea of things. But the reason AI can generate such uh, impressive and convincing written words isn't because these words come from experience. It's because most modern language no longer refers to experience. In other words, it's this entanglement of one abstraction leaning upon another abstraction for its existence. It's a house of cards that falls apart. The moment you ask the question, does this relate? Does this point to reality in any way? And so the reason we're so easily fooled isn't because AI is so smart, it's because we have all been fooled by language, believing that there's some kind of meaning there in the first place.